I am so excited to welcome Lindsay Marie Olson, an incredible hair colorist, hair stylist, a Redken artist, Samvia ambassador. I just full of knowledge and I'm going to bring her in. What's up everybody? Hey Ashley, so happy to be here. I cannot wait to see what you have to show for us. <laughs> I have a lot, always. So if you've ever been in a program with me, you know I have so much that I want to share with all of you guys. I'm super excited to see everybody that's tuning in and share all of the styling info for today because we are starting to go out. So if you're starting to go out, type in going out in that chat bar. Um, so I'm going to share with you guys natural hair styling because one of the things that I specialize in is natural hair. So working on all textures of hair and all um, uh, types of curls. So I'm actually going to show you how you can utilize natural curly hair in to put it into a stronger finish. So if you're excited, type in excited in that chat box and we are going to get started. So I am going to start uh, by breaking down like how I started the prep because prep is so important to how we do finishing. So it's all of how the hair is set up before we actually put pins into it or elastics. Like if you do the proper prep, then everything is so much easier. So I love seeing you guys all join in. Definitely tell me where you guys are from. And Ashley is super amazing and so helpful and I'm so grateful to have her here. So as I'm working, please, type in any questions that you guys have because she will interrupt all the amazing information that I want to share with you guys so that you also get your questions answered because that's the best part about being live. So we are going to start with a very natural curly uh, look today. So this one is inspired by the picture that was on the flyer that uh, is for this class. So if you got to see that, that is what we're going to be creating on Janet's here. So the prep was first going in with Redken's um, Acidic Bonding Concentrate. So this was their Perfecting uh, Concentrate Lotion that was put in first. And then I diffused using Redken's Ringlet from Curvaceous. So this is all the natural texture that Janet has, which is beautiful. So um, we're gonna use her natural texture to finish the look. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn it around and we're gonna start this way. So right now it's just diffused with Ringlet um, and all of that definition. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just start to expand the base. So I'm gonna expand the base just coming in with a tail comb. And yes, you can touch curls when they're dry and not make them frizzy as long as you prep them the right way. And a couple things that I'm gonna share with you guys now. So when I wanna expand the base, there's a couple different ways I'll do that. So I'll come in with my tail comb and I will just start to actually lift out. So the natural texture is really gonna give me so much volume just by pushing out. What you don't wanna do is pull the comb all the way through the curls and you don't wanna rake your fingers through these curls. So once the hair is dry, we can push out the base uh, using uh, a tail comb to start to get that volume in there, but still maintaining that separation that is happening here from the curl. So uh, I'm just going to start to make a little bit more volume with using a tail comb to do that. I'm also going to use another product that I love for support. And this might surprise you uh, on natural texture that I like using this. And it's uh, Redkin's Triple Dry. 15. So this product uh, is basically a dry shampoo in a hairspray. It's one of my favorite products to use when I'm styling naturally curly hair for a finish. So what you're going to do is lift up some of that hair, give it a little bit of shake, and you're going to apply that triple dry at the base. So coming in, lifting up that hair, and applying triple dry at the base. So this is going to help give more hold and uh, the volume, so it'll help the finish last longer. So I'm just going to turn her to make sure I get it on all the sides here. So we'll do that on the other side. You can see this side's a little bit flatter because I didn't push out any of that base yet. Now, if this was your guess, how would you do this? Like, would you typically take them through the diffusing process or would you have them come in with their hair already diffused? I think that's a question of like just how you want to set yourself up for the finish. Like if you know that Goss is really good at doing a diffuse look on them, they can maybe come in with it already diffused um, and then you just would do what we're doing now. So that one could help save some time. I know when it comes to styling behind the chair that we, you know, sometimes don't have, you know, an hour and a half. Like maybe we only want 45 minutes to do a uh, finish. 
So going in again, now that that triple dries in there, I'm going to spray a little bit more. Anybody surprised on how much product I'm using? Don't be scared of it. If you ever took a diffusing class with me, the one thing that you might think is, oh my gosh, she's using so much product, but that is key. That is part of the key to it. So again, just coming in with that tail comb and just picking up that base and getting that natural volume in there. So if you've learned at least one thing already, definitely type that in the chat bar. Uh, one thing that you already learned because it's definitely gonna help you remember because I know your time is value, very valuable and we appreciate you guys joining us today. And when you type it in, it helps you remember actually what you learned because I'm sharing a lot of information with you guys today. I know it. So I'm just gonna move over and just still creating more of that lift and it's gonna soften it. So when we're working on natural texture, we can use our fingers, but close when the hair is dry. So if I'm ever going to manipulate the curls, if you've ever been there and it got frizzy on you, you might've been raking the curls too much. So if you use your fingers closed and you're sliding it through, you will be able to get some expansion. I typically will get a little bit more expansion by taking a little bit of oil. So I like all soft argan oil from Redken if I want to expand and soften up because you guys might have saw like, oh, it looks very separated. And what we want is you want the control first when you're doing natural hair styling. So for a finish to really last, you need the control first. So it might look really separated and not that loose, airy feeling yet. But if you've ever done like a loose boho style braid, you know that we don't start with like a really loose big braid. You start with a tight braid and then you pull it apart. So same thing goes when you're working on natural texture. If we want it to last, we gotta start with it really controlled first. That's why the product application and the diffusing is so important. So then when we go to manipulate and create more shapes so we have the control already in there. So if you guys are having a fantastic time this morning, uh, write in fantastic in that chat bar. So now, you can see that like as I'm moving, see all the volume that we have, and that's just going and lifting up and applying that triple dry. So I'm just gonna keep pushing this back to get a little bit of more lift on this base because I like it to be super, super, super full. So I'm just gonna expand it even more as we are working our way back. And what you could also do is have your guests flip their head upside down and give it a little bit of a shake out with that triple dry. So we're just gonna ask Janet to flip her head upside down and we're gonna give it a little bit of a shake and take a little bit more of that triple dry and spray it at the base. Don't be scared of that triple dry and then just running it through. So all that separation. All right, so now how do we put this into a shape? So we're gonna bring this curls back. Again, we're using your hands close with a little bit of that oil to break it up. So close hands. And this is, if you've ever felt like your curls were too crispy for whatever reason, doesn't matter what the reason is, but they were too crispy, all you have to do is loosen it up. So a little bit of oil on your hands, grab a small section and slide and loosen it up. And this is just gonna give so much more airiness. Is it looking looser? Type in looser in that chat bar. Cause I think it's starting to look more softer and natural. So just loosening this up. You can use your hands a little bit also to just massage that base whenever you are done with the prep to loosen it up even more. All you wanna remember is that you're keeping everything here the way it is. You're not running or raking your fingers through all the way at the ends. So I'm just gonna massage it a little bit more just to expand. And color is key. If you've noticed, this Janet actually has some dimension. If you have a guest that shows you a picture, uh, a lot of them are blonde, number one, when it comes to finishing. So another hot tip is, if your guest shows you a picture of a blonde finish and they are not blonde, make sure that you have something that's in their color palette so that they can see what the finish will look like. Blondes are always gonna show more reflect and definition um, than a brunette. And if your guest has 
no uh, hair color, no dimension. This is why when we add these accessories, it's also gonna help give a little bit more pop to the finish. So, all right, so we're gonna bring these pieces back. I do a lot of like working with the hair before I put a pin or anything to it. So even these front bits right here, I wanna see a little bit of separation. So I do have that argon oil on my hands and I'm just going to start to unravel some of them and get that separation. So always think that you should start to see the shape before you start pinning anything uh, that you want. So this will help set you up to save you some time. So just bringing these bits back and giving them a little bit of separation on both sides. She has a little bit of a fringe. So you can see these bits here are shorter and that's okay because I will be able to secure them once we get that middle area locked in. So. Are you guys starting to do more finishes? Wedding hair, is that happening by you guys? Are events happening? That wanna know what is going on in your world because it's definitely happening by us. Um, I love doing weddings. I don't get to do as many as I used to because of my travel schedule with uh, the brands that I work with. Uh, but I do know the, the stylists that I work with in the salon are super busy right now with weddings. So this is the perfect time to see some other finishes. And make sure if you guys can see everything crystal clear uh, as I'm working. So as Ash, is everybody doing good so far? If you guys are doing great, type in great in that chat bar. Yep, you're getting love from all over the world. We've got someone from India on here, which is amazing, Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, lots of weddings, I see. Yes, amazing. That's what I thought. So I'm happy to hear that it's not just by us. I'm super happy that everybody is getting back to it and doing all the beautiful events, life events that they want. So as you can see with that triple dry um, and the set, like how much volume just from coming in with the triple dry and just starting to push out that base with a tail comb, everything's already starting to get set up. So I haven't even pinned anything yet. Um, we're going to get there. I promise. I'm going to show you how easy it is to tie this look up, but you do want to make the hair ready before you actually put a pin into it. I think we've all been there before. Uh, you might've pinned something it's too tight. And then you're like, what do I do with it? And I will say styling has been a huge, huge part of my journey, uh, as a salon professional, but definitely as an artist, because I do a lot of photo shoots and editorial work as well. Um, so I know maybe some salon professionals are sometimes think, oh, well, does that, it's not as much of a ticket as a, a full color, but I've always wanted to do it all for my guests. So, and I love working on photo shoots. So think of when your guest is that special occasion, I wouldn't want to send them to somebody else. So if updos aren't your thing, I am determined to help you get inspired to make them your thing. So when your guest is looking just for something a little bit different that you can share them with something different, because they could be wearing what we're doing right now, just on uh, weekend since they might be going out now. So again, I'm just right now separating and picking up and bringing those curls back. This one, I'm just using the natural curl. Now I do want to share with you guys, what if the natural curl wasn't as strong? What if there was like a piece or two that might've been like amazing? So maybe it's a heat damage piece. Maybe it's a uh, piece that was you know, maybe over chemically treated. Uh, so if you feel that there is a little bit of need for a stronger polish on a couple of the pieces, how do we make the curl look natural? So uh, I'm gonna take just the one inch uh, Sammy iron, Sammy iron. I'm gonna detach the lip, the spoon, and I'm gonna use it as a wand. This is one of the many reasons I love this iron. I also love how long this iron is. So when you're working with very long hair, you actually have the space to work on the barrel. So it's super important that you have that for certain techniques that you actually can spread the hair all the way out. So if you wanna make a couple pieces stand out and have a little bit more pop, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a small piece of hair, and that red kinesthetic bonding um, perfecting concentrate lotion. I'm probably seeing the name wrong. Don't tell them. Acidic perfecting concentrate, you guys. It has heat protection in it. So there is heat protection all the way on this hair. If I needed more heat protection, uh, I would, or more control, I would come in with iron shape. And yes, I 
I love the minis because I travel a lot. So this is Iron Shape 11. Uh, I have a lot of uh, kits because I do a lot of different work. So I travel a lot. So if I need more uh, heat protection, I come in and I would just spray a little bit of Iron Shape. All right, so we're gonna take this small bit, all right? And what you're gonna do is you're going to wrap it around the iron one way. So we are wrapped. We're gonna let that sit. You're gonna take it out of the iron and now you're gonna wrap it around the iron the opposite way. So what this does is it creates a very, uh, not so perfect, more natural pattern of the curl. So you have all this beautiful natural texture in there. You don't want to all of a sudden have like a curly and iron curl in there, but like maybe they need like a little bit of extra polish, extra pop on there. So this is the way that I would like kind of give it like another pop of layer. So, and it might just need like a couple pieces on the top. I also use this technique uh, when I'm working on my guests with natural texture in the salon that maybe aren't used to wearing their hair so natural and they just want a couple stronger control pieces. So just wrap one way and then wrap the opposite way. And this will help give a little bit of a stronger control on some of the pieces. What you don't need to do is you don't have to be really like heavy handed with the tension. The iron's going to do the work for you and we want it to look as natural as possible. So when I'm wrapping this, I'm not like wrapping it really, really strong. I'm just laying it on the iron because it's hot enough to just create the form and we want to keep that naturalness into it. So if that was something new and something fresh that you can use behind the chair, type in fresh in that chat box because I am excited to see how you will create your own. That's the one thing I love about sharing is no matter what I share, um, you are always going to put your own style on it. This is what makes you, uh, you uh, behind the chair. This is what makes your guests love you. So I will share as much information as possibly can. You're never going to do it exactly like me. I mean, if you do, I'm not going to be mad about it. I'll be happy about it. But you're always going to put your own flair on. So uh, definitely tag me if you use that technique um, behind the chair or on yourself. And let me know um, how it goes and how much you love it. Because I guarantee it's been super helpful for me. It's going to be helpful for you. Okay. A little bit more oil on my hands as I'm taking these sections. And what I'm doing right now is I have the bangs coming back. All right. And I'm just taking a section from basically the Prado Ridge on both sides. So let me turn her. So right now I'm starting right here, right at the Prado Ridge um, to put some control now into the finish. So I'm going to take these two sections. Have the oil on your hands always to keep that softness. And what you're gonna do is take these two sections, keep some hair in between. You don't have to have the whole middle combined with this because that's gonna create more volume and texture if we keep it out. We just have like these little side guys there. And you're going to take them like you're going to tie a knot, just like that. So you're gonna tie a knot. And what I like to do when I tie these knots um, is take a small elastic and just put the elastic right underneath that knot. So there is one knot. This way, when I want to add more volume, I will be able to pull out the pieces and it's super secure, but I'm not gonna do it yet because I'm gonna do one more, but see all that shape that we're getting already? So looking beautiful, Janet, you are going to kill it when you go out this weekend. Everybody is going to love your hair. Don't you guys think she looks amazing? Okay, so we're gonna do another one. I'm gonna take um, all the hair from the side here and on the opposite side. So let me bring it to the side this way. So now we have the two bits from the side. So have that oil on my hands. And again, all the natural, beautiful texture just creates that movement in there. And again, you're gonna come in and you're gonna tie the hair like you are going to tie a knot and grab those two ends. And right now you're just gonna put an elastic right behind them. And this way it gives you flexibility. I use these like mini faux knots all the time to create shapes um, that maybe look more complicated than they are because like you can pull them out. So now I can take these knots and just start to pull them out. It also gives me the flexibility to pull on the hair to loosen that up. So as I'm pulling these knots out, it also hides the elastic. You won't see it once we are done. And if I need to put them closer together, I'm just gonna take a hairpin to do that. But first I want to loosen it up even more. So even on the side here, loosen that up. 
even if she has some bits falling out in the front, it's just gonna look even more loose and organic and soft. So now I could just gonna take a hairpin. I use hairpins a lot when it comes to finishing. So the hairpins, um, not of them are created equal, I will say sometimes. So hairpins being the open ones. So these guys, so like this. Um, I like bobby pins, the closed ones, but I do feel that these hold more hair. And I remember when I first started doing hair, I was like, that thing doesn't hold any hair and it falls out. Um, but it really was just about learning how to place that hairpin in there. Um, but you don't want the ones that open up really easily. So like when you like test them, you want to take a hairpin. And if I go like that and it stays closed, it's a good one. If you go like this and it opens, those are not going to hold as much hair because if it opens just with you flicking it, the hair is going to fall out too. So something to uh, keep in mind. So now I'm just going to connect these together with taking a hairpin from the bottom of it. And I'm just going to push that hairpin up. So that way they are connected together all the way there. I could even put one on the sides there. Now I can just pull this out. Let me just take that from this. One more time. So going from the bottom. Um, I will also say too, don't be scared when you're using the hairpin. You should feel scalp. So I'm gonna take the hairpin in. You should feel the scalp there. It's not gonna hurt. And then go again. So I'm going in with the hairpin. I'm gonna show you with the bigger one just because I think it's a better visual. So here's the big guy. These are, I think, like a three inch hairpin. So if I take that hairpin like this, touch the scalp. So then I have hair there and then I go up. Now it's going to lock it in place. So you got to have like something to grip onto there. All right. So moving on with how do we add more detail? So you can keep pulling this out, keep pulling this out. Because it's tied with elastics, it's not going to go anywhere. So what do you guys think? Is she looking good so far? Is she looking beautiful? Uh, type in beautiful in that chat box. I think she's looking pretty fresh right now. Something super subtle and easy could even be just a uh, weekend look. Now these top bits, if you are worried that they're just gonna like fall out, we can then take the hairpin to secure them a little bit. So I'm gonna take the little guys and if I take the hairpin, sometimes I'll take the hairpin and just like weave it in and out. So I will take my hairpin and just go in and out. Let me make sure you guys can see this. Let me bring it really close. So let me know, can you guys see what I'm doing? So the pin's gonna go up and down, up and down, up and down. So it's grabbing hair in and out, in and out, and then you're gonna slide the pin in. So this way, when I'm going up and down, up and down, bring it to the scalp, push, and then go the opposite way. That pin is there. It's locking in all those bits. Can you guys see that? Let me know if you guys can see that. So now it's still keeping that like loose organic feeling that we want with this texture all here on the top, but it's not going to go anywhere. So uh, this has been super helpful for me as a sales manager because like I said before, uh, they were, I thought they were like not going to hold the hair. Your, your view is perfect, Lens. Uh, I know I can see, I saw a few people saying they can see. Perfect. This is awesome. And I just keep thinking about the hungry little caterpillar when you're doing that. I was like, I know. I was like, that's a good visual, I hope. I don't know. <laughs> it, was like, it, was like, it would uh, make some sense, a hungry little caterpillar. That's cute. That's <laughs> cute. So that way they are locked in and you get the movement in there as well. So I'm going to do one more on the top on the other sides because I want it to be as full as this. I don't want to like make it smash down like the whole point that this is like a loose organic natural style so um but i want to make sure that uh when she goes out that it also stays there too so again coming in with that pin aka little caterpillar and you're going to go up and down up and down so you don't have all the bits in your in the pin you just have some of them bring it to the scalp, feel the scalp, push down and bring it back. So um, if that was like a major aha for you, please type in aha in that chat box, put that one in your back pocket, use that in the salon because it will be super helpful for you. I know it because it helped me. So I wanna share with you guys all the things that have helped me so uh, you can miss some of the mistakes I've made because God knows we, I have made uh, my fair share, but it's what makes us who we are and know so much more information. So I'm not mad about them. I just want to help share. Again, up and down, up and down to the scalp and push down. Uh, so that way it creates all these beautiful ripples uh, in that front or sides, wherever you are doing it. 
And then, I mean, she is looking pretty good, but let's add some detail. So especially if their hair was darker, this has been super helpful. And this might surprise you guys, but so what I'm gonna be using for that detail that was in that picture is um, braid clips. So I don't know if you guys have ever used these before um, for updo styling, but number one, I just dropped them, that's okay. Number one, they are very inexpensive. So um, not a bad thing then, because if you are trying to add detail to a look for your guests and you they didn't bring something, you can supply these and they're not very expensive. I think like a pack of them is like two bucks, okay? You can find them at most um, wig stores. The other thing that I really like about them is that they are, they're like aluminum. So when you take one of them, uh, you just open it up like that. And you can put this anywhere you want on the hair. So yes, they are made to add details to braids, but I use them for this look. So um, very easy to use. So I just have a few uh, gold ones here. They come in many different colors um, and they're just a great way to add some accents. So uh, very easy to use. So I'm gonna come in and just add one here on this little bit. So you just open it up and then close it. And now we are just adding all the extra boho uh, chic vibes to uh, Janet here. So um, if this was something you have not tried yet, braid clips for an accessory, uh, but you like it and you are going to try it, uh, type in, I'm trying this one in that chat box. And don't forget, if you have a question that I did not answer yet, we are here for you to make sure that you learn more than you could have imagined this time tuning in with me on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, live. So Ashley's got my back. She will make sure that she sends these questions through. Told you guys I had a lot to share. All right. So I'm going to put in a, a couple more of them, but see how much like this gives it so much more pop that there's just something going on. I will also say friends, um, if you want your work to stand out on social media, who doesn't want their work to stand out on social media? You want people to see it. Sometimes it's like something really small that's different. Do not be scared of being a little bit different. We've seen beautiful hair is beautiful. I like beautiful hair, but what can we do that's slightly not everybody's doing? So like I said, these come in all different colors. Like maybe you're going to pick up some neon ones and make something super cool and creative like that. But I can't wait to see what you guys create because I think you guys will. I think this is super um, helpful for events just have a couple packs in the salon and add some detail and you definitely sorry friends my consumer friends you still can charge extra for this because you still are adding an accessory uh that they um will use uh, again and again it's so funny the picture that it was a flyer for this was um my, my guest that wore those for the the picture her daughter loved them so much too that they used them for like weeks, she said, uh, which was super cute to hear. They were super excited about it. So I like hearing that. So again, now I'm even, what's cool about these is they're just going on the loose bits down here. So I'm just taking a small bit here, opening up that uh, clip and then just closing it. Um, there's no clasp on it. They just close with you tightening them. Um, so they will stay and it doesn't matter how thick or thin the hair is, they will actually stay. So just looking to see like what is going to complement the shape enough where it doesn't look too set, but it also is um, got a little bit of a fluidity to it. So it doesn't look like random. Um, well, random in a good way, but not like one weird one in that spot. So maybe a few more of these clips. Thank you so much. Um, Janine, I'm glad you think this is a great tip. I am happy to share all of them for you guys. Uh, since we are getting into some more styling. So I think a couple more down here will be really good. Um, and when it comes to the natural texture, diffusion, diffusing is game changing to create volume. So if you're not currently diffusing the curls, um, definitely something that I teach a lot and even here on Sambia that we could share with you guys how to uh, diffuse the hair to get it to this point uh, before we actually start styling. So let's see, what do you guys think? Is this starting to flow, free flowy styling? I actually love the name of this program. Um, I think maybe like 
maybe right here. I love that you guys are actually in my mirror right now. So this is amazing. So I think right here, maybe we need one more. Um, and if you notice, like I didn't need hairspray because the set was before we started doing it. So the natural texture gave us obviously the shape, but it's all with using um, Redkin's ringlet first um, with the acidic perfecting concentrate. And then I went in with Redkin's All Soft Argon Oil. Um, I did use, sorry, that was close to you guys. Uh, this is a dryer that I use for diffusing. This is the Sambia Vision Dryer with the diffuser. So uh, this is the diffuser that comes, uh, that fits on it. It's a Sambia diffuser. A lot of people ask me like, well, can I just get a diffuser? Uh, I know most blow dryers, like you can't just put any diffuser on it. So uh, this is my favorite go-to dryer and diffuser because I like the shape of the diffuser and I like the power options in that dryer. So sometimes some dryers are way too hot and too powerful where this gives me all the options when I am diffusing here to have a low power and a medium heat so that it doesn't create uh, too much frizz. So now like even when I'm done, if you want, you can start still picking up some pieces and some looks, but I think uh, Janet is looking pretty freaking fresh and ready to uh, go out. So this is look number one and you guys, I'm not done. I got one more for you guys. So if you're ready for another look, uh, type in ready into that chat box because I got it for you. I'm going to share you guys even more for you guys can get ready on this free flow styling. So she's over here. So hold on. Let me get her. She's ready though. Okay. We went with longer hair this time. And I obviously have started a little bit of the prep uh, to save your time because it is super valuable. So I can't have you guys see like the whole, whole prep, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I did with this. So I've done, she has natural texture, but her texture was a little bit lazier. So we went in and created a little bit more texture with the iron. So if you missed it and you're just tuning in now, I'm gonna show you again how I create these like natural, uh, lazier waves with uh, my iron. Let me just tighten her and turn her this way. Okay, so we are gonna come in uh, with iron shape. So this is the big one, the real guy. Uh, what I love about this product is it's heat protecting, it actually has protein in it, so you're actually strengthening and protecting your guest hair. My hot tip is I use the little one uh, most of the time. I have the big one to refill the little one, but I travel a lot, so this is the one that I use. And I also find that it's easier to spray. I know that might seem like such a little detail, but I think it's actually kind of important. So I'm gonna spray a couple pumps of my iron shape on my section here. And again, I am using the one inch uh, iron that I took the lip off. So I detached it. You have the option of doing either of those. And we are gonna come in and we are gonna create that more of a natural wave. Always prime your section. So go ahead and heat up that section with the iron first. But we're gonna alternate the way that we wave it because we have so much length to work with. So I'm gonna come in after I've primed that section. And when you prime the section, this is what helps prevent you ever getting like a dent on your hair. And sometimes like the iron work, you might not be going all the way up to that base if you're creating more of like an effortless loose iron look or wave look. So we wanna put that shine that it's gonna happen all the way down here. So then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna wrap the iron flat, wrap the hair around the iron flat in one direction. Again, I'm not applying like a lot of tension, just enough to get the finish on it. After that's heated up, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna take those ends and I'm gonna turn them and wrap them the opposite way. So this way it creates a very like soft and effortless, not too uh, perfect wave, especially when we start to um, break it apart. So again, Heating up the iron, we or heating up the hair with the iron, you guys. I can talk, I swear. So heating up the hair with the iron, and we're gonna change the direction. So now I'm gonna wrap the top layer forward instead of away from the face. So wrapping that hair forward, and then I'm gonna bring this hair back and wrap it opposite way. What you could do, like if this was your guest, and they do have natural texture, so you can always like I always set up my guests to come in with their hair clean, dry, and like a light product on the hair for pretty much everything I'm doing. So I don't know about you guys, but as a colors behind the chair, um, clean, dry, and just a light leave-in conditioner product is actually the best setup for most of the things that I'm doing behind the chair. So even if you have a guest that's coming in for a special occasion, uh, this is the iron shape, don't be shy. It's not one pump that was like five or six. Make sure that the hair fully gets saturated with it. 
But, okay, so when you're telling your guests how to come in, um, fortunately, guests, we, FYI, just something I know somebody at some point told you guys to come in with dirty hair. I'm sorry. We actually want your hair really clean for all services we do. We will put the grip that we need on your hair. So for color services and for styling services, we want clean, dry hair with a light leave-in conditioner, and we got the products that will put the grip and the texture on it. So especially if your guest had natural curl, he was okay with not seeing my face. I think you want to see the hair more than the face. Uh, if you had a guest that has natural texture to their hair, no matter what their texture is, clean, dry with a light leave-in product, and you could have them diffuse their hair, even if it's a lazy wave, and then just build the shape on it with doing this technique. So I went away, now I need to go forward. So these are all my tips for you guys for working behind the chair. I hope that you guys are having an absolute blast and learning a lot on this. We are on Tuesday morning, uh, or it might be the evening. Not quite sure. What time is it where you guys are at? Type that in the chat box. Is it the evening? Is it the morning? Is it afternoon? I am outside of Chicago, pretty close to the city, and it is 10.38 in the morning. So. But not where you guys are. There was India. There was a global audience. So where, what time is it for you guys that you guys decided to tune in with us and learn some natural hair styling? So see how this is definitely not a perfect curl. That's what we're going for. Not perfect, but still going to have a finish on it. So one more here in the front. Again, don't forget, heat it up. Obviously, the, the iron, if you guys can't see, is not running on my guest's forehead, just so you guys are aware. Don't think that I like and burning their forehead. But if you need to like lift it up a little bit more, make sure that you apply pressure when you're using the iron, really heat it up. Now this front bit, I actually think I'll go forward like this because if I curl the hair forward, then it's gonna give me more of a ripple when I'm bringing it back. So it's gonna give more of that like boho vibe. Let it heat up and then bring those, the rest of the hair and bring it back and let it heat up. See again why I really like this iron. Do you see how long the iron is? So her, this hair is pretty long. We have lots of guests that have this much length to it. If you have those irons that are like half the size, it does make it more difficult to do techniques like this. So this one has saved me multiple times for that. She's set. Also, keep your hands out of the curls until they're cooled down. So type in cool down in that chat box. This is gonna help tremendously the lasting power of the curls. I know we get excited and you're like, you wanna see it, but let it cool down before you start raking your fingers through it. And then we can actually put our hands on it. Love it, Lindsay. Um, I had we have a question about the heat setting, and yeah. I thought it was a perfect segue to kind of talk about the heat settings on the tools too. Yeah. So yeah. The reason, uh, well, many reasons why I like the tools, but the heat setting. So there is uh, a low, medium, hot heat setting on this. I do have it all the way up because of the density and the texture. Now I will say. Depending on your guest density and texture, if you have very fine blonde hair, you're going to turn it down just on the green setting. It doesn't need all the way hot. And then medium is our orange, and then our hottest is the red. Um, so this way, um, if I know the density and the texture can take the heat, it's going to go all the way up. Uh, if they don't need that, just like take it down a notch. It's okay. It will get all the way. Uh, the finish that you're looking for it doesn't always need the highest heat. All right, so I just lifted up the back or the top to show you guys what I did to help anchor this in. So this is something that's super helpful for me as a stylist, whatever I'm doing in the salon or shoots or whatever, um, to help anchor hair in. Now, especially like I've used this if a guest has a lot of extensions and I don't know where I'm gonna be able to place hair. So if you have guests that have a lot of extensions, type in extensions in that chat box because I don't know about you guys, but like 99.9, but 99% of even the girls I work with, the styles I work with, have extensions, and so do a lot of my guests. And what can be a challenge is, as amazing as all that hair is, it's really hard to find a place to pin because there's either bonds or there is beads. So you can take a loose braid, like you could just take a piece of hair here, braid it, and just fold it here and put it with pins. So that is what I did. There's a braid here that's from their hair. So this way, when I'm pinning, I have somewhere to pin into, and it just goes on top of the extension, so it actually gives you a base. So that is a major hot tip of how you can anchor uh, more hair in. We're gonna come in again with that triple dry and spray from the bottom. 
And I'm going to do this all throughout all the sections. So I'm just going to lift up a little bit of the top now, just to subdivide here. I think the braid's actually pretty ma major. Back up, you guys. Was that major for you? Type in major if that's major for you guys in that chat box. That's game changing for me to have something to pin to. Uh, and sometimes you could actually use it. Here's another thing. You could use it if you're just like, she just got so much hair. I don't know what to do with it. So you could use that braid just to get rid of some of the hair. Sometimes we, we don't need as much hair as we think we need sometimes to do styling. So it might be a way that you just get rid of some of it in the middle, but you still want the length and the density at the end. Um, so now you can come in, depends on the texture, um, with a little bit of that argon oil on your hands and start to break up these waves. So I'm just going to come in with that argon oil and break up the waves. This one, I am spreading it out. I know I said close hands on curls. This is more of a loose wave and I want to break it apart and I want to disrupt it because I want it to get really, really soft and more of that boho vibe. If I was concerned about frizz and a, more of a tighter curl, my hands would be closed. But this, I actually want to break it up. So again, coming in, my hands are primed with that oil and just breaking up everything this way. So again, breaking up all of this. So now we can see what does this wave look like? So is this looking more of like a natural, loose, I uh, like I don't want to say it's beachy because it's not beachy. We want it just to look more natural. Like they might have like woke up like this type of wave. Honestly, like a lot of people really like it to look not. You don't want it to look too perfect. Like they would rather it look like they did it themselves. All right, so it looks cooler that way in my eyes too. I love salon hair, but some people don't want salon hair. They want cool hair. There is a difference. All right, now we are gonna just pin a little bit of it back. So just gonna bring in a wide comb and just bringing some of this top back. And again, everything is about the prep because now when I'm bringing this hair back, see how, yeah, this looks super cool. I like this. If you guys think that she looks cool, type in cool into that chat box. I think she does. I think this looks like ultra effortless not so perfect, has volume, type of wave. Not that I was surprised, I knew what it was gonna look like, but I'm just, you know, talking with you guys about this. Okay, so again, bringing this through. Oh, I would say that too, like depends on how much you wanna break it up. I always start with my hands first when it comes to finishing, so starting with your hands first. Um, and then if I wanna like change, like the tension, then you go in with the comb. So see what the hands do first, with, like to break it up. And then if you wanna increase it, then you come in with a comb. If you want to increase it even more, then you would take a brush to it. But like start the process so that you can see um, what's happening. Let me just take this little split that she's got going on here. I'm going to come in just with the wide comb and just give it a little bit of a push there. I don't want total the split. I don't mind some of it because this is not meant to look like super, super, you know, done, done. It's like cool, done. Okay. So now here's the braid. So I can just take the back of the hair and with my hairpins go from the hair. So going from where I'm at, getting some of that hair in. Now I'm going to the braid. So now that hairpin is in the braid and then I'm just going to push up. So now it secures it, but keeps it almost looks like an invisible pin. Like it's like, is it pin? And that is the goal. Like how did we actually get this to stay because it looks so effortless so again i'm just bringing a piece back so here's a small section back here's my hairpin going right now in the hairpin is a little bit of both it's the hair on top and it's the braid so i can feel the hair on the top and the braid i'm going to take the hairpin and i'm going to turn it and reverse it flip it and reverse it very missy elliott and secure so now it's getting secure, but it's still staying loose, which is what kind of the hair that I love to do is very, very just effortless, loose, and uh, fresh. So I'm just going to turn her and continue to do that. And you can imagine this braid like really makes all of that possible. If you didn't have that braid, what would you be pinning to? And then you would be taking away too much of the volume that we're seeing here. So it's 
getting pinned without looking like it's pinned. And then you really don't have that many pins in their head. I don't know. It's not really a compliment when they're like, oh my God, I counted how many pins I had in my head. And I had like a hundred. I was like, that probably hurts. All right. So bringing this back, let's see, a little bit less there. So I'm always trying to find ways that are less uh, work than doing that. And now I can just bring these sides back. And you can use your own personal style, like how much hair that you want left out here. Maybe I want to have a piece out here, but then I'll pick up a piece underneath. And then this piece right here, just to create even more uh, movement to it. So really effortless. If effortless is your thing and loose and boho, uh, type in, I am loving this into that chat box because I think this one is going to be perfect for you to take to the salon and recreate this week. I would love to see what you guys do this week with these looks. Grab a friend, a colleague, and create some freaking cool content for yourself. So again, I'm just kind of like placing this back, just kind of like playing with like how much hair I actually want to hang forward and how low do I want to place this hair. Knowing I can move it after I get it here, but always like, you always wanna like, I think we easily can get into like too close to the work. So stepping back and taking a look at it. I like these bits that are just kind of like hanging. They're there, but they're hanging. All right, let's do a little bit more on the other side and then she is almost good to go. So again, bringing these bits back and anchoring them into that braid and being able to keep so much hair on the top so it looks really, really loose and uh, soft and natural. I think this actually could easily be something that you would see in a magazine or for fashion week or for the weekend. So super easy to do. And even if they, it's either if they had the extensions that they needed to add hair to, or if they had too much hair, you can utilize this braid uh, technique. I'm gonna grab one of my favorite products to finish this style with. And that is a wax blast from Redken. So now I just wanna spray a little bit of the wax blast and kind of pick up some of these bits and just see how much more texture or definition did I wanna put into this area and maybe a little bit more secure there. So one more pin there. Thanks for being my mirror, you guys. Thanks for being here. You guys are amazing. Let's see. So yeah, I think it just needs like one more here just for that separation. So if you've ever struggled putting up hair with extensions before, uh, tell me I've been there before. Tell me I'm not alone, you guys. That struggle is real, right? Where do you put the pins? There's so many extensions, which is awesome, but it's blocking. Where can I put the pins? So do you see how like this wax blast just takes it up a notch when it comes to the separation? So this is wax blast 10. By far one of my favorite hairsprays from the from Redken. Um, because it has a wax kind of texture to it. So when I'm working on natural texture or something very textured, this is definitely my go-to hairspray. So let's get this side in. I'm gonna pull this out a little bit because I think the other side had a little bit more hair out. And don't be scared. I think one of the best things I've ever learned from styling um, is to mess it up. And up, yes, you heard me right, mess it up. Don't be so nervous to like pull things out. I think it just gets better when you kind of like loosen it up and let go. Same thing when it comes to like, if your guest had showed you a picture of inspiration, let the inspiration take you to some of it, but then stop looking at the picture and start looking at what's happening here. You will get a much better result if you kind of let go and just embrace what the natural texture wants to do, what's working on their face shape um, with their density, because a picture definitely will inspire you, but it can trip you up. Like I've been there where you're like, can't get it totally like the picture. But what you're missing is there's something beautiful happening right in front of you. And if you just try too hard for the picture, it's never going to look exactly like the picture. Like, let's focus on what their density, their face shape is, their hair color is. So let the picture get you so far. And then let the rest happen because you are very talented, very skilled professional that knows what they're doing. And to create some badass, I mean, beautiful lore. You didn't hear that. I didn't say that. Beautiful work. So 
Um, this is, again, I'm just taking that wax blast and spreading out those ends to create, let me make sure you guys can see all of this. So how is she looking? Is she looking beautiful to you guys? Type in beautiful if you guys think she looks great. I think she looks super, super cool. Beautiful. Oh, <laughs> Wow. I know. <laughs> Incredible. These tips are like mind blowing. Yay. I'm super happy to share. Very happy to, to share as much as I possibly can. Um, they've definitely, and this is what she looked like from the front. So let's also see the front. The front's good too. So should I give you another 360? And then I know you guys like spent so much time with me. I can't wait to see what you guys create. I'll give you one more 360 of this last look. To move it around all the texture there and all of the movement um this was a fast hour ashley this was such a fast hour with everybody um yes. super excited to share as much information as i've actually kind with you guys it was amazing as always um mm -hmm. these are like such great tips to take back behind the chair which i think it's all it's, all it's about right oh like, yeah like i couldn't ever I think as a salon professional myself, and as much as like I do so much for brands, I just never would feel right about sharing something that I didn't know that you guys could actually use. Yeah. Like whether I'm on stage or here, because like the whole point is like you're spending your time to like do something that you could do this week. As much as I like really cool, yeah. inspirational looks, those will only go so far. Like I want to give you guys stuff that you guys are going to be able to use this week, make some money, have some fun with it, feel creative, be inspired, but actually like put it into practice. So do yes. try these this week, like find a colleague. If you don't have a guest that's going out and take some pictures of it, create like a lot of my content is not just my guests. It's, you know, other stylists that I work with to help create co content to help yes. inspire my guests that then they want that bun or they want that updo or they want that braid or that color because you have to put out what you want to come back to you. Absolutely. And everything you do <laughs> and make sure to tag Samvia hair and Lindsay. Absolutely. We'd love to see it. Yes, definitely, definitely. Thank you guys so much for spending the time. Again, I can't wait to see what you guys create. And I really, really am excited for you guys to get your hands on some natural texture this week. Thank you so much, Lindsay. It's Thanks always a pleasure to see what you create. Oh, watch out. Me and Ashley are going to do some work together soon. That's right. It's coming. I can't wait.